Thank you um, to you both, Sarah and Alicia, for inviting me to be on this panel. I often feel like a bit of an interloper um, when I'm sharing the stage with um, esteemed uh, curators and historians, um, because I've spent most of my career working with contemporary art. But um, while I was at the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria, I found myself responsible for the Emily Carr collection. So my forays into um, art history are becoming more frequent. And with this invitation, I got to go way back to my origins as an art historian. Um, because Prudence Heward, uh, and specifically Prudence Heward's Black Nudes, um, were the topic of my research paper when I did my um, MA in Art History at York 30 years ago. Um, can I have the next slide? And um, I feel like a lot of threads are coming together uh, in this little presentation because um, this painting, Dark Girl, um, was a painting that I first saw in 1986 when I was a student at Queens. And um, for my uh, um, early study of art history, um, she was very unlike anything that I had seen before, anyone I had seen before. Um, particularly because um, of the surrounding of the sumac bushes. And in that early exhibition uh, curated by um, Natalie, Natalie Luckage at the Agnes Etherington um, Prudence Heward Expressions of Will, this painting was accompanied by a small sketch which was called um, uh, Study of Sumacs, very clearly situating um, this sitter as a Canadian woman, a Black Canadian woman, or at least a Black woman living in Canada. Um, I wasn't sure at the time if it was a hypothetical Black woman living in Canada or a hypothetical relationship between the woman and Canada, or if um, she really was here sitting amongst the sumac bushes, which are indigenous to Southeastern Canada. Um, and a few years later, uh, in the early 90s, looking, searching for a research topic to complete my MA, um, Joyce Siemens said, Michelle, choose something that you care about. Um, and I thought back to this painting. And um, I realize in hindsight that the reason I really dug into it was because I related to the sitter so much in one way. Um, uh, some have said there's even a resemblance between, between us, but in other ways, um, she was so odd to me because as a woman in the late 20th century, um, I would never have been caught dead outside nude. And thinking about, about her, um, person living in the 1930s. It just seems so, so incongruous to me to see this, this figure in the Canadian outdoors. So the impetus for my research paper became a deep desire to understand who she was. At the time, I thought that that understanding would, would come through identification of, of who she actually was. And I set on a path um, searching through all of the primary and secondary sources about, about Heward speaking to um, family members that I could connect to. But ultimately um, that, that path didn't really lead me to specific information. So my text expanded into a framing um, analysis of the socio-cultural realities of 1930s race relations in Montreal and the Canadian art scene, so that I could at least understand what would have brought this woman to Prudence Heward um, and what their relationship might have been. Um, for the purposes of my text in the Uninvited Catalog, and to borrow words that Sarah used in her opening talk last evening, the scab that she picked with me as I was writing and rewriting 
um, was one that uh, led me to bring a lot of the critical reception of this painting to the to the forefront in my text. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, um, I think as we we hear from the other speakers, we'll we'll learn how um, how significant, how controversial um, the paintings of nudes by any artist and by women artists was um, in in this early part of the 20th century. Um, on the first exhibition of Dark Girl in 1936, Augustus Bridal, who was the art reviewer for the Toronto Daily Star, wrote that Dark Girl was a masterfully ugly figure. And writing for Canadian Forum, Peggy Nichol McLeod described Heward's, quote, honestly morbid color and special manner for painting moping women, noting that this painting of a baffled but disinclined colored girl is carried to perfect conclusion. In light of not knowing who they were, we are left with who Heward and her critics and viewers thought they were. Can I have the next slide, please? So this is um, a, a later uh, nude in Heward's series, um, painted in 1941. And in this instance, Heward is removed from, or sorry, the Heward has removed the figure from the natural surroundings, presenting her in a built environment instead. There's some indication that Heward's travel to Bermuda inspired her painting of black sitters, um, but Dark Girl predates her first trip to the Caribbean, which was in 1936. And Girl in the Window reads so much as Montreal that it seems clear that Heward was, if not painting women in Canada, painting the experience of Black women in Canada. So through my um, long investigation into um, these works for that research paper, my assumption and the assumption of many who have interpreted these works is that the sitters were women who had moved to Montreal from the Caribbean to work in the domestic trade. Heward was from an upper middle class Anglophone family. And if there weren't servants in her own home, and it's interesting because a lot of the research suggests that there were servants in the home, but when I was speaking to her um, family members back in the early 90s, they were trying to distance themselves from, from this reading of, um, of Heward's work as um, one that exploited a power relationship between herself and, and servants in her home. And they denied having any servants. But even so, um, she would have come into contact with black servants in the homes of her, of her um, friends' families. Um, my reading is that these are women who agreed, perhaps for payment, or perhaps for some indebtedness to Heward to pose unclothed for her. Can I have the next slide, please? I don't want to preempt uh, Toby's presentation, but I bring this up um, so that I can refer to um, a bit of the text in a bit of the text that Toby has written about this work. Um, she, uh, Toby observes that Heward knew how to, quote, um, be careful to retain key traditional compositional elements that would have reassured a conservative and conventional public helping to mitigate potential controversy. Um, her nude reclines in a landscape and her bent right leg modestly conceals her pubic hair. Um, the fact that the critics made more of the color and dispositions of Heward's nudes suggests to me that they were imposing assumptions about the women's exoticism and primitivism, readings that rendered nudity a natural state for them. The thing about this identification, of course, is that the women of that women of Caribbean origin of the time would have come from incredibly proper backgrounds and nudity of this sort would not have been natural. 
um, back in 1935, responding to the controversies around nudes in Canadian painting, uh, the art historian Donald Buchanan addressed the issue of the nude and the delicate Canadian sensibilities in an article entitled Naked Ladies for Canadian Forum. And in this article, he proposed that critics were willing to accept nudes if they were, quote, sentimental figures, ones that seem symbolical or of purely academic study, and that, quote, naked women are wholesome if they have the great outdoors as a canopy, and that naked women, oh, sorry, I was just about to repeat myself. So I actually think that Heward found a loophole with, uh, with her, black, her Black subjects because um, there was, I think, an underlying assumption in the viewer that uh, nakedness and uh, connection to the landscape was a natural state for them. Uh, furthermore, when you think about some of the controversies, controversies that occurred with white women painting white uh, women subjects, when the subject is black and there's that implied relationship of um, uh, a power imbalance, all of a sudden the impropriety of uh, the sitter being nude in the studio with the artist is, is undone. Can I have the next slide, please? Sorry, next slide. Thank you. Um, this is a little bit of an uncomfortable conclusion to come to um, that that Heward was potentially taking advantage of uh, uh, women that she held power over, uh, specifically because Heward is often so often spoken of as a feminist icon. Um, but in the case of Heward's black nudes or her depictions of women who are indigenous or poor or otherwise other from her own experience, um, we are reminded of the complexities of feminism and what is learned to be, what is to be learned from art history. When I look at these two portraits together, Indian head and Negress with flower, I still wonder who these women are and of course struggle with the titles of the works and the artist's choice not to name her sitters. However, I've learned to find great satisfaction in entering into controversial interpretive spaces because there's so much to be learned when we dig into this discomfort. And that is the end of my presentation.